friends, it's Patty Amateo. I'm here today to show you how to use three primary colors in order to mix several secondary colors. When we first begin to paint or do any kind of art, it's really important to learn how different colors interact to create other colors. We can certainly go out and buy 50 bottles of paint that are in many different hues, but when starting out, not only is it a less expensive practice to just start out with a few paints, it also helps you understand how your colors are going to interact with each other while you're painting. Today I'm using Golden Fluid Acrylics. This is a uh, slightly runnier paint than a heavy body acrylic. Golden paints are fabulous paints. They are very pigmented, they're very high quality, very vibrant, and as I said, they're fabulous, but also fabulously expensive. Um, these are four ounce bottles. You can buy them in smaller bottles as well. Or you could completely forego golden and use a different acrylic. It doesn't really matter in this circumstance when you're just learning how to paint and learning how colors mix. You don't have to have the world's most fabulous paint. So try whatever is available to you within your within your budget. So we've probably, probably most of us have heard that red, yellow, and blue are the primary colors from which other colors are made. The oranges, the greens, and the violets are all made from combinations of these colors. But in learning more about color theory, I've learned that it's actually not red. It is magenta that is a primary color instead of red, and that cyan is the nature of the blue that is considered primary. So here's what I have here today. This is Hansa Yellow Medium. You can use any yellow. A different brand is probably going to have different titles. What is important is that your yellow looks like a true yellow and not greenish, and it shouldn't look orangish. It should truly look like a medium kind of yellow. This is quinacridone magenta. Um, other brands might have another name, but any magenta will do. And if you don't have magenta, use red. Um, this is primary cyan. Other blues will work too, such as phthalo blue or ultramarine blue. Each blue is going to yield a slightly different green or violet. So it's kind of fun to play around with the different blues and see what they do when they interact with the yellow and the magenta. So I'm going to put these aside and we'll get ready to mix some colors. Before we begin to paint, I'd like to tell you about a couple things um, that are important to me as a painter. I try to be as earth friendly and as, stain as sustainable as possible, always thinking about is there something I can reuse or repurpose or recycle. And so instead of buying painting palettes or using a paper plate, which is pretty common, I try to use things that I can recycle. Um, this is just a small herb packet and I like to use these for painting because you can snap them shut and they're pretty airtight. So after you squirt out a dime size bit of paint for this little practice we're going to be doing, um, if you don't use up all your paint, you can take a water spray bottle and spritz it a couple of times with some water to keep it a little bit moist. And if you don't use that paint, just snap the cover on and you can put it in the refrigerator for a couple of days or you can even keep for as long as a week. And then you can use your paint on another day rather than wasting the paint. So I like these kinds of things. If you're using a lot of paint, you can use a bigger bigger recyclable container. Um, so this is something that I use for painting too. It's just from a carryout container. So we can use that plastic a few more times before we get rid of it. The other thing, instead of using paper towels, this lovely thing is a cast off sock with holes in it for my husband. Um, he wears these great crew socks. And yes, this lovely thing, you can cut it right open, 
it's like terry cloth, like a towel. It's very absorb absorbable, absorbent. I can't even speak. Absorbent. And so it's great for just wiping your paintbrushes clean or mopping up whatever you need to do. It doesn't have to be a sock. You can use an old t-shirt. Those work just fine too. I'm just using, um, this is an all-purpose journal, and I traced around a plate, and then I traced around a pencil sharpener to make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine circles. Um, you don't have to do this exactly. It's just helping me with the spacing that I need in order to show you all of the color mixing that I'm hoping to do today. So this is not perfection. Remember, perfection is truly the enemy of creativity, and it can stop you in your tracks. So please just think of this as playtime, an opportunity to learn, an opportunity to play, and an opportunity to know that there are no mistakes here. It's just all learning. So I have a simple, cheap, round brush. I'm going to dip it in the water first, get it a little wet, dab off the extra water, and I'm going to start my palette. So I will start with Hansa Yellow Medium today. Lovely, sunshiny color. Mm -mm. I don't know about you, but just looking at these colors makes me so happy. I think it's color therapy for me. Some people are into retail therapy. I'm into color therapy. Then I use my rag to wipe off as much of the paint as I can so that my paint water is going to have very little acrylic paint in it because I don't want that to end up in my water supply, right? Acrylic paints are made from plastics, and you've probably heard plastics are getting in our water supply. We don't want to contribute to that. So, sorry, I'm on my, uh, my box here. I'm preaching about protecting the earth, but it really is important, right? It's the only earth we got. So after I wipe the paint off, I clean off again, and I'm ready for my next color. Here is quinacridone magenta. Another luscious, delicious color. I'm not worried about making perfect circles here. I just want to spread the paint around. There is no perfect. Then I wipe off on my rag again, dip in my water, and now I'm getting kind of an orange in my paint water. Dry that off. Next, primary cyan. And that's going to go two blobs over here. This is a medium blue. So a phthalo blue would look a little bit darker. Then this one, um, if you chose ultramarine, I think it looks a little more purpley blue. It really is one of my favorite blues, ultramarine blue. But this is primary cyan. Wipe off the excess paint on my rag. Clean my brush. Now normally I don't clean my brush like this when I'm working on a painting, I just, don't worry about it being so clean for most purposes. But for this, if I get my paints all mixed up, you won't be able to see the period of each color. And so I'm being kind of careful about it. All right, I'm going to go back up to my Hansa Yellow Medium. And I'm going to start mixing my colors up so you can see what happens when they mix. You don't need to buy 15 bottles of paint in order to have a really broad palette. So if you know how to paint, how to mix paints, then you've got a wide variety that you can make from just a few bottles of paint. And again, if you're spending piles of money on golden paint, that's a beautiful thing to not spend $100 on a few bottles of paint. So I'm going to be mixing a little bit of my quinacridone magenta into each of these blobs. So next to the yellow, I want just a teeniest bit of the quinacridone magenta to make 
that mixture, and then I'll put more quinacridone magenta closer to the quinacridone magenta to make a darker version. So I'm gonna use just a tiny bit of this quinacridone magenta because a darker color will overpower a lighter color in no time. It's better to start small and add than it is to overpower it right away and then you're using gobs of paint, which you don't usually need to do. Making an orange here. And then uh, this is already dried up quite a bit. I guess it's a little drier in my house than I want it to be. That yellow, I want it to be wet, so it will mix with the magenta. All right, now here I'm going to be adding some magenta. And I want this color to be a little bit darker than this orange. So I need to add a little more magenta. And you just keep playing until you get the, the shade that you want. So you can see that this color is really more like red than it is like an orange. I'm gonna add a little more yellow here just so you can really see that that's orange versus red. So magenta plus a little bit of yellow, primary magenta plus a little bit of yellow equals red. Next, we'll be mixing quinacridone magenta with primary cyan. I always have to think before I speak. Sometimes I say the wrong color. So I'm going to add some quinacridone magenta here. And some here. Then I'm going to be adding a small bit of primary cyan here to hopefully make a lighter violet or purple. Oops, forgetting to clean my brush. I'm so bad. So on a watercolor paper, this would work much better than it's working on this mixed media paper. But this is what I have today. Again, perfection is the enemy of creativity. Next, let's see, are you wet? A little bit. Adding the quinacridone magenta again, because it was a little dry. And then I'll be adding more of my primary cyan to see if I can get a darker violet, which hopefully you can see that is darker than this one. It looks more true in real life than it does on my camera, but that's what we have there. And then we will be mixing primary cyan with the yellows to see what that yields. So here we're getting a nice dark foresty kind of green. You can 
can see that that's a green. And then here, we'll be mixing the yellow. Now again, the blue and the magenta will overpower the yellow really quickly. So I'm just gonna add the teeniest bit. I'm barely dipping, barely dipping my brush in that primary cyan to hopefully get a lighter green. And you can see that it is a lighter green. Now you've probably heard about making mud and you can see what's happening with my paint water. This is what happens when you mix all three primary colors together. You get this mucky color. So if you wanna make that color, just go ahead and mix all your colors together and you will get some variety of a grayish brown. But if you don't want to make that color, then by all means, don't, don't mix them together while they're wet. So I'm gonna add a little yellow and then again, it's gonna very quickly be overpowered by the darker color. So making an orangey red then when I add a bit of blue, you get kind of a brown. This is sort of a greeny brown, so I'm going to add a little bit more of this quinacridone magenta to... Now it looks more like a purpley brown. So you can see how if you add more of one color or another, it tints your brown in a different direction. So there you have it. This is how you mix your primary colors. And again, if you add titanium white to any of these, it's just going to give you a lighter version of your colors. So anyways, have fun, play, know that you are not making any mistakes, that you are learning about color. It's just a grand experiment. And thanks for joining me today. Really look forward to having you on the next video with me. So take care and play. See you next time.